and welcome to the Nerd Age Podcast, where we talk about everything nerdy. I'm your host tonight, Corey, of course. With me today is Jonah. Yo, yo. Josh. What up? And not Mick. He is unfortunately under the weather tonight. Hopefully he gets better. All right, Pete. Uh, <laughs> hey, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> All right, Pete. Uh, but today uh, we're going to be talking about The Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, episode four. Um, and Dude, the, the episodes have titles, right? What's yeah, the actually, titles? This is the, the Great Wave. Oh, The Great Wave. Ah. ah. Let's see what they did there. <laughs> This episode was awesome. I think uh, yeah. we see a lot of really cool reveals, story plot lines kind of shown kind of where this season's going. Um, but I had one big issue, guys. Where's my Harfoots at? Where are my Harfoots? I think dogs? most people don't agree with you. I, I, know, I'm I, was, joking. I'm I joking, was the same way. I was like, eh, I'm, yeah, it felt I like there was a the little bit of brevity on. missing. Yeah, which that typically brings, but uh, yeah, what do you guys feel about them not having um, a storyline? This is the first time they've done. I that. was okay with it because I felt like everything else was, I was interested in it, um, mm-hmm. but I do kind of agree. I think um, they, I think this show's done a really good job of setting up some like things that I'm curious about, mm. um, like Meteor Man, who he is, uh, where they're going, all that kind of stuff. So it was kind of like, oh, I want to know more about that dude. Is he Gandalf? Is he Sauron? Is he a blue wizard? Is he Tom Bombadil? Um, So I did feel like, oh, I wish they were showing a little bit of them. But at the same time, it was like, I liked all the stuff with the dwarves. We get more time to spend with them. Yeah, and I like, I really like Durin and Deza and and all all that's going there. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I I felt all the stuff was good enough that I wasn't missing them that much. So I th- I wonder if they're going to be doing this kind of rotational. <laughs> Sorry, Josh's mic keeps going <laughs> Josh down. Laughing at he the keeps mic. playing with it. And oh, like, he said something. like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but they might, <laughs> they <laughs> might, they might keep doing that. I, th- I think. I think they might do a, like a rotation kind of like. Yeah. Maybe a little extra Harfoot. You know, some other episode. Yeah, because um, we didn't get any of the Duran stuff last episode. So right. I think they're kind of. Weaving it in, which I think works well for the pacing, because if we get every single character every episode, yeah, which I think it was a lot for the first two episodes, yeah. and I think a lot of people like kind of noticed that they were, you know, maybe complaining about like, oh, there's so many characters to learn. So I think balancing it out probably makes sense moving forward. Yeah. Uh, so I think we'll probably get a, a little bit of a rotation, and yeah. especially if we don't know where the Harfoots are going, right. so they could right. end up. Going to the Southlands, or we don't know where they really are, so th- they could like, yeah, meet up oh, with some true. a group that we know, and then you have like, you know. So I'm kind of hoping, or I, I kind of expect that there's going to be overlap of yes. certain storylines yeah. going. Like yeah, I think so. Arondir and what he's going through is like, is are that just going to mix with the Harfoots, or is that going to mix with Galadriel? Like, there's there's going to be some overlap as we get closer to the end of the season. Yeah, let's talk about Durin's kind of storyline uh I, I mean you're right it was mithril um and uh it was pretty obvious you know but but it was cool that's cool yeah uh what'd you guys think on that um did did you do you like uh what's her name nissa disa uh, disa that's what i thought it was um did you like her like i, I how she like covered for him and i think do you like that disa and Doran? i think for me right now I love their dynamic, Ke- like and I'm really and loving their characters the most. Mm. So anytime they go back, I just feel like... <laughs> I feel like they have the most character, and that's why I like them so yeah. much. Yeah, and they just have good chemistry, and yeah. I've, I'm intrigued by that storyline. I'm a sucker for dwarves, so that whole mm. thing, seeing Kazadun and all that kind of stuff, um, and then the intrigue of you know, his father, and like he's kind of coaching him to be like, hey, well, you're going to go with the elves, like... There's kind of like they're not trusting. They're trying to figure out stuff. So I think there's yeah. like some cool dynamics going on there. Um, my favorite part of the episode was the conversations they had about fathers, Elrond and end. Durin. Oh, um, oh, yes, yes, yes. That was really good. Um, and I just thought the writing was good. I thought it brought in some cool lore. Um, and it was just like even the whole themes of fathers, even with Adar at the beginning, like he's the, the orcs call him father right Mm -hmm. and so there's there's kind of a really cool you know when he's gonna when he kills the orc you know at the beginning of the episode and he goes and the orc's like really hurt and he's like smiling and he's like he holds him like a child right and then he like puts him out of his misery yeah 
that whole dynamic of fathers and, and their children, you're seeing it with Isildur and Elendil and that kind of aspect of it. I just think it has been really well done that that theme played out throughout the whole episode was really good. So that was my favorite stuff between mm. those themes and those kind of conversations between Elrond and, and Durin. So yeah, I'm, I thought that was really good. Yeah. Yeah. You see it with Muriel also. She's dealing with her, her father who's basically deteriorating. Yeah. Um, so that was a, yeah, the, the whole thing oh, of yeah. fathers and, and children uh, was a really cool theme. I think the Adar stuff was my favorite. Um, really? Yeah. Just mm, like a really interesting. interesting take that we haven't seen with the orcs uh, before. You know, all the orcs are like, uh, they're going to eat you. Uh, we're gonna, supposed to do this. Right. You know? uh, so I think that was really cool. And yeah. yeah, like you said, just to see like the look on the orc's face, like when he sees Adar come and he's like, you know, it's like he's happy. Yeah. That to like see a little him, kid. Yeah. yeah. And that was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I can't say enough about the practical effects for the orcs. They, they look great. They look so um, good. But yeah, just that scene was super cool. And then when he kills him, he's like, it's not like, uh, whatever, mm-hmm. let's get rid of this guy. It's like, it hurts him yeah. to, to kill this orc that he cares for, <laughs> which is crazy. Um, yeah. and like, yeah, the, the, the guy that plays uh, Adar, I think he killed it. Like just with the, the look in his eyes, like you've he gets like, a little tear, he tears up a little bit. It looks like it, it hurts him to do it. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. Um, really cool. And I'm excited to explore that his character more cause you know, we don't know who, what his name is. Um, yeah. So it'd be. I know there's a lot of people speculating online. It, it, he might be a, an existing character, which it would be. I mean, it, it. It. I don't. It wouldn't completely break the lore. Uh, I think they have some wiggle room for it if mm. it was a specific character that people think it is. Uh, but it, it would be interesting uh, right. to see if if it's some that, someone that's just made up or if it's like an actual existing character in the lore already. I feel like this is the first time that we're kind of seeing a almost like a more human side to the darkness, which is interesting. Yeah. Because you see this emotion and then also kind of like the care he takes when he does stab him and he, mm-hmm. he like takes his blood and he doesn't wipe it off. Right. Mm-hmm. He, he just carries that after he killed him and is kind of an interesting aspect of it. Yeah. yeah I thought that was really cool. Um, and, and like you said, it's a little, it's interesting because we haven't seen that even in the Peter Jackson stuff. It was kind of like, you know, you had Saruman. Sauron was always just a giant eye. Like there yep. was right. never like no a face, physical presence, yeah. no emotion in it. It was just like the big eye on top of a tower, you know, and then you had you know, orcs like Lurts and um, the Urukai and, and stuff like that. But there never was like a, a villain that you could kind of see emotion with. Like Saruman, I guess, was the closest. Yeah. But, um, you know, you got Wormtongue, but there wasn't like a big bad. And this to me felt different. And it gave kind of the orcs, I guess... Not really. Humanity, but not yeah. really. You know, but yeah. like they feel like real characters. They don't feel just like... Like stormtroopers that right. you're just like, not like just cannon like, fodder. They're yes. like formidable foes and they have character development, I guess, in some in some way. It's it's interesting. I really enjoyed that. And I think that bodes well for moving forward, right? Because you're gonna you're gonna wanna relate to um bad guys and the villains. And I think the cool thing that we've talked about before that they might be doing is they're kind of giving you, you're going to find out some of your, the characters, human characters are, end up being Nazgul, Ringwraiths. So they're kind of developing a story with them. So I just, I like that. I feel like we're, we're setting off to go to a point where we can relate to the villains, which I don't think we really could in the Lord of the Rings films. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's kind of something that this series is doing really well. Does that feel like it fits the Tolkien's kind of writings. So with Tolkien, especially with the orcs, something that he kind of regretted in his later years was like, because this whole concept is nothing's truly evil, right? In the beginning. So the fact that he created orcs that in his stories are basically like straight up evil, he struggled with that later in his Mm. life, especially him being Catholic. Um, It's one of those things where he's like, well, that doesn't fit. Right. Just someone that's like straight up evil. Melkor in the beginning wasn't evil. 
Sauron in the beginning right. was evil. None of the characters in in his uh, legendarium are like he's just pure evil from they the were beginning. Just born they were evil. just born evil. Right. No, uh, so the fact that orcs are essentially that is something that he struggled with later on in his life, where he's like, eh, I kind of maybe I'll tweak some of these things. Um, so I think it's interesting that the people from Amazon will get a chance to kind of maybe mm. explore that a little bit. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Have you heard of anyone having give big complaints about this almost, you know, not humanizing, but giving them emotion? Uh, I haven't seen any okay. complaints about that. I imagine they're probably out there. I don't. So, <laughs> Oh, I'm sure. If so, you look hard enough, you'll find anything really. So there's a, like on, we have a, a nerd age TikTok. Um, that's right. If you, check, if you check do it TikToks, out. check out the Nerd Age check TikTok. It out, check it out. But so when I'm scrolling through, I always end up getting because I've been posting some of our Lord of the Rings clips. Yeah. Um, and I get these other podcasts and other or people that are they put clips out and they're they're always complaining about things that I'm like, you're like fine, that's something you can complain about. But I was like, but it, there's so many good things you can discuss. Yeah. And you're like they continue to point out like the short hair on elves, you know, yeah. and they continue to point like the, the dwarves, women don't have beards. And I'm like, yeah. and just stuff like that. Or they, they had a whole clip on like, um, in the Lord of the Rings, um, there's establishing shots where you see the fellowship walking and you see the mountains and the scenic things. And, and this series doesn't have any of that. And so you don't feel like you're on a journey. And I'm like, well, you're not really, it's, yeah. I was like, you have a, okay. an hour to go. And I was like, but no one, none of these characters are really on a journey. Like the fellowship was right. like the, fe they were trying to show you like they're traveling over this thing. I was like, none of these characters are like, like one's held prisoner. The other one's being captured by the orcs. Like it's not, they're not going anywhere. But they did give you establishing yeah. shots when they rode Numenor out and, and you were Numenor. like, Oh, they did slow motion on her face. Oh my gosh. That's cringe, what I'm saying. Bro. Yeah, so it's like, those that are shot, the <laughs> no, that shot didn't really give you a scale though. It, it was, it yeah. was too close it did up. At the beginning though. It did. It was so quick though. It was so quick. And but I, I, I just think, I don't think that counts. I think the one where they come into the town on the ships at Numenor, that gave scale. And yeah. Gave you a sense of the world that they built. I, I just I think feel that like, did a really good job of it. Like, those are the complaints I'm seeing. And so my big question okay. to those, like, people that are doing that is I'm like, yeah, but why aren't you ever posting anything about, like, we're talking about, like, the, the theme of fathers in this thing. Like, there's stuff you can unpack and talk about, um, but people are refusing to have conversations about that interesting stuff and be more focused on, like, well, I don't like the short hair elves. Like, that doesn't make any sense, you know? And, yeah. So that to is a disappointing because I'm like, well, I want to I want to listen to other podcasts or other people discuss things that are right. interesting, that are important themes that are being like, talk about the acting, talk about whatever. Hmm. But it seems to be nitpicking about little things that I'm like, we passed that after the first episode. Well, like it, to keep bringing that up. It's like the ship sailed. Yeah. When when you like something, it's a, it's a more quiet voice. Right. Um, obviously, we've seen in some of our own stuff that we put out. We get more hits when we're negative uh, about something. Yeah, Marvel <laughs> some, sucks in some in some cases. Um, <laughs> That's exactly why this episode is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we hate it, guys. Come on, watch. dumpster fire. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, so let's talk about Gladriel's uh, kind of uh, the Numenorians kind of storyline. What's going on over there? How do you guys feel about how that all went down? For me, it felt a little. Uh, it felt all right. Um, it felt a little, not awkward, but it was a little clunky, a little clunky. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Clunky. What, how'd you feel I would about say it? that's my, there was one scene that I felt was like, eh, that when I watched it, I was like, I didn't like that is when she's in, in the, the prison, in the prison yep. and she throws the four guards in the prison. Yeah. I just like, again, I was like, I wish I was done better. done better. Yes. Um, it just seemed like it, she grabbed one guy and the rest of them were off screen and then all of a sudden they're all in there. So yes. I was like, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, people can complain all they want about that. Yeah. Um, that's fine. There, there is a little bit of, I know what they're trying to do with Galadriel, where they're trying to make her be like, you need to give her a character arc, right? Yeah. She needs to develop. And so they're really going for this. She's so headstrong that she doesn't listen. And Hal Brand has, has told her that like for yeah. the last three episodes. So I yeah. get what they're doing, but I do feel like it's a little for her being an elf it does feel like it is might be they're they're really teetering the line where it's a, might be a little over the top. That's kind of my feeling now. Mm -hmm. It's still not to a point where I'm like, it's completely stupid and ridiculous, but yeah. I'm like, 
it they might want to bring it dial it back just a little bit because i do feel like it's she is like especially in her conversation that she had with the the whatever her name muriel yeah um and she's like Mm -hmm. arguing with her and yelling at her and stuff i was like it did feel a little over the top again Mm. i know what they're trying to do where they're trying to establish this is how she is and she's so focused on sauron that she's right she's blinded she's blinded i get it but i can see where people would see it's like it's a little too much yeah i think it i think the a big reason why we're we're feeling that way is because then you you see her compared to elrond and he's like super wise like the guy like the guy is very patient he sees through things he can he has great perception um it's probably 20 at least yeah uh, perception (laughs) rating um (laughs) <laughs> and then you see her, and she's more like a not a spoiled like, but like just more like a, a twelve on perception, like a twelve year, yeah, twelve on perception. Yeah. She doesn't have any pluses, um, and it's just a straight roll. Uh, that's for all you D and Dners out there. Um, but yeah, no, it, th- I think that's a big reason because we see him, and then we see her, and she's like just so blinded and so stubborn that it's like, are you guys elves? <laughs> like yeah. the elves were supposed now, to be like super wise, um, but everyone's different, and, yeah. And so I, I understand it, but yeah. I, I agree with you on on that that aspect of it. I think that Hellbrand is is wiser than her, and 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 she and he's more of the coy kind of clever person. He's a he's smart. He knows how to people please. He knows how to work around things, and that's why he has that wisdom for that. Right. And she's a warrior, and so they're very different people. Yeah. So, so it makes sense to me. And they bring that up in the first yeah. episode where yeah. she talks to Elrond. She's like. You sound like a politician. Yeah. Th- that's mm. kind of what they're establishing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Elrond knows how to deal with people because he's in that world. Right. She's a warrior. She yeah, knows. Yeah. So yeah. they've established that's the reason, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. I think, in, I think in the story they're telling, it makes sense. Yeah. I can understand being like, like, oh, I mean, at the same time, though, it's only been four episodes. So yeah. um, you, I, I think she's getting there. Like, even just this last episode, it's like, I think she's being a little more self-aware. Uh, and Hal Brand's a little being a little sketchy too, because I think yeah. I've seen a lot of people be like, "Oh, so you're gonna find out what they fear and then give them power over it, and then yeah. you control them." And it's like, "Oh, cool, that's uh, that's exactly what Sauron does." Yeah. Uh, so they're they're putting these things out there to kind of to suspect of you know who's Sauron, what's yeah, going on. For so, sure. um, I, and I do like that aspect of Hal Brand being like, "This isn't your arena," like. You don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, and we also get this kind of the same theme with um, Farazan, where he's talking to his son about, like, I don't want you to be clever. That's for people with small ambitions. I want yeah. you to be wise. Yeah. And he's already doing things. I, I saw people complaining about um, the speech he gave and people being like, oh, so he just had, there's just people with drinks waiting there. I'm like, to me, that's that seems like he's already planning that. Like, he's like, oh, there's going to be people in the court. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to give my speech. And we're ready for bring the drinks out kind yeah. of a thing. So he, uh, I thought that was seeing his side of the of uh, the work of like what he's laying. Yeah. The groundwork he's laying. It was interesting. Uh, I, I, mean, I thought his speech was good. Yeah. I think that's kind of silly. Uh, I don't think getting drinks out is a big event. I, it's not It's not like you're mixing drinks and you have to prepare right. all this stuff. It's just like wine or whatever. Right. Like you well, just pour even, out. Like, that's no. That's not an issue. Again, yeah. in the episode whatever. before, they established that in that court, they're like, "This is where we debate. This is where yeah. we yeah. like." There's they probably celebrate there. They're too. polling yeah. uh, when Galadriel first gets there. Like everyone's there. They're already doing stuff. Like that's what as in Numenor. That's what they do. They kind of establish that. So it, to me, it's like mm. an, another nitpick. Yeah. It's like that's what they do. They're always <laughs> like the, that's where discourse is had. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I, I did like his, uh, his son also, who's a original character and also the daughter. I thought their interactions were, were pretty good. Um, I liked his line of being like, she's like, Oh, I don't make a habit of going out with strange men. And he's like, Oh, you know, if I, if I see one, I'll let you know, kind yeah. of, you're the first one to know. Um, so I think that'll be, that's an interesting setup to see Creep kind removed, of like, dude. Yeah. <laughs> a oh, slight smooth, smooth, smooth baby. operator. Mm. Smooth operator. Okay. Um, I think that's a good, it'll be a good setup for later episodes of kind of seeing Farazan's son and then Elendil's daughter. Like, is it something, you know, aw- that's going to be awkward family dinners, you know, yeah. with both of them kind of talking. So, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, overall, I, I really liked the, the Numenor setup. What about Isildur? Uh, yeah, 
I thought, I thought that that whole situation. I mean, I I think it was a little. Um, I mean, they had to do it for the plot, it right? Felt weaker for me, but yeah, it was still okay. The I guess. whole like, I'm gonna get rid of you and your friends kind of a thing is like, you had to do it for the yeah, plot yeah. to kind of set them up to you know volunteer to go That's to what Middle they Earth. Do in Numenor. But um, yeah, they you dismiss and, people yeah. in threes. It's the rule. Um, That's but, a Tolkien. Uh, that was in the Silmarillion. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they dismiss in threes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I did like kind of getting some of the backstory about him, uh, about his brother being, it sounds like he's uh, what you would call one of the faithful. He's like super focused on the the true West. Um, we also get the, the line, uh, his friend says, you know, all you do is mope and whine about your dead mother kind of a thing. So yeah. it's like, we're getting a little more backstory. And it makes me kind of think is that, that voice that he, that he's hearing is that his, is that his mother that's calling him? Is it like the memory of his mother, uh, kind of calling him back to, um, does his know, brother have his a, brother, uh, a, a woman's impression. voice? Yeah, right. it's and very like, possible. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, I liked it though. I, I liked it. Um, I wish that they would have, I, I don't know, like just letting go of a rope and they're like, Oh, you're out of here, man. It was a little weak for me, but it was fine. It was fine. I think I, the ending of that uh, arc of the story, I think, was a good enough reveal to kind of like tie it all together with uh, the, the king and then also the petals like dropping off the tree. That was really cool. That scene. was really well done. Yeah. I think that was really yeah, cool. I think the build up to the end and even the mu- the way the yeah. music builds towards the end, and then you slowly get everyone kind of raising their hands and you get the build up yeah. to. Uh, kind of the crescendo of the music. I thought that was really, really strong. And Ooh. even the opening, even the opening with like the vision of it all being destroyed. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like that. I like the Palantir and yeah. you know, Galadriel seeing about that. that um, I thought was really cool. And I wasn't expecting them to go into like first season showing us that Numenor is basically going to be Gonzo. Like I was expecting them to take their time with that, but it looks like, we're going right into like, like we said, compressed timeline, you know. So that's kind of interesting that they're episode four. They're already kind of foreshadowing like, oh, this is what happens. Um, yeah. So that was interesting. But I was going to ask you about that <clears throat> part of it because I, I don't know. I mean, I know that it does get washed away eventually, right? Spoilers. Um, but my my question was, so did you guys take that as like, so she she took that as a sign that, oh, I need to work. I do need to listen to the elf and I do need to go along that way. But is that kind of like, are they trying to delay the inevitable? Um, basically like that, the Palantir that's going to happen for sure. I mean, we know it's going to happen, but I don't know. I'm just kind of confused on yeah. if you don't know what's going to happen in the future as a regular viewer, how are you supposed to kind of take that? I guess. Right. I, I mean, I guess I think that especially from the perspective of Muriel, that's, what could potentially happen. And I think that's what she's trying to avoid, which is why when she sends, she's like, Oh, Galadriel starts everything. That's what's going to start the downfall. So we want to try and avoid that. And then the fact that she's like, well, I send her away. And then the petals fell. Yeah. She's like, so it's more to do the opposite. Just kidding. I'm going to do the opposite. More direction from, uh, yeah. From the Valar where she's like, Oh, it's, you know, their judgment on us, the tears. Um, so I think, I think it's, uh, Similar to what you see in other, um, you know, other stories of like, can you really avoid fate? Right. Like what is, how do you avoid a, you know, we can, uh, Tolkien likes to call it in his books, doom, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's just like finality. Something's going to happen. Uh, you can call it fate. You can call it doom. Um, and no matter what you do, like that's going to happen kind of a thing. Do you have a choice in that? Uh, can you change the minds of the gods kind of right. thing? So I think they're kind of playing with that idea. And that's kind of what Muriel's seeing is like, I have this 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 seeing stone that basically came with a, a vision, essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so how do we how do we avoid that future? Mm-hmm. Now, where did the plantier come from? Was this crafted or was this like a, from the gods or? So uh, Feanor, the same guy, you know, we talked, I think episode two, they talk about, uh, Feanor's hammer. He mm-hmm. created the, the, the seeing stones. The crafting guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The guy who created the dwarves. Uh, no. So he created oh. he created the Silmarils. Oh, the Silmarils. He's the elf. Right, yeah. right, right, right. He's the big uh, crafter elf. 
Ah, uh, okay, okay. He's okay. Celebrimbor's grandfather. Okay, so this is elf made. Okay, yeah. gotcha. And so he made the seeing, he made the seeing stones, and then they were given to the Numenorians as a gift. Ah. Uh, so there's seven seven total. Uh, so she mentions, you know, the six other ones are are hidden or um, are lost. Are lost, right? Um, and then eventually, uh, they get taken to Middle Earth. Uh, which yeah. is where you see Saruman has one. Yeah. Denethor has one. Uh, there's one in uh, Minas Morgul. Basically, all the yeah. big towers yeah. uh, that the Numenorians build, they put a Palantir yeah. in there. Okay. Um, and what are we missing? Um, oh, I, I wanted to say, uh, going back to um, Durin and, and those guys, man, the shot of the tower being built, that tower looks sick. I don't know, dude. They're rolling. They're like, oh, yeah, they're really awesome. Man. They're really good at this. <laughs> that it was, was like a, this spirally like half tower. It looks awesome. That was another nitpick I was seeing. Someone would be like, well, man, they just built that in, in the course. I was like, you don't know how much time has passed. Right. Like, yeah. They're not, it's not just, oh, one day's passed since it like. It's not 24. Yeah. It's not, uh, like you just, <laughs> we got a little they, clock. They don't need a car to tell you. It's like, you just got to assume, oh, yeah, they've been working on Things it for a happening. while. Yeah. I think and you don't know. Like they could have started it before and they have the doors kind of helping, you know, right. it's just, mm. but yes, the tower I think looks awesome and I yeah, can't wait to see dude, it when it's finished. They're literally born from the crafting Valar, right? Yeah. yeah. Like he was like, that's all they do. That's all they, they love to do this. And so I don't know, man, it, it's believable for yeah. me. Yeah. I don't really care. Um, but yeah, it looks sick. <laughs> I, I thought it was cool that we got like quite a few callbacks to, um, the Lord of the Rings in this one. So we get Mithril, a mm -hmm. callback. We have the Palantir callback. And then it was cool seeing when Galadriel goes up to the room. Yeah. In the background, you see a sword that looks suspiciously similar to Narsil. Um, it looks... The broken blade. Pretty much the same. The uh, double handle, like the... Yes. Like Aragorn's sword. So I the, was going to point that out too. Those weapons looked awesome. Yeah. Kudos yeah. to the team who made those. Those look fantastic. The great axe looks awesome. And then also the sword looks yeah. really good and oddly familiar. Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting that they're going with that aesthetic. But it's yeah, li it's lighter though. Yeah. It's lighter. It's like a, yeah, oh. it's almost like a tan. Yeah. Um, so it looks a little, but I mean, I think they're going, they're doing it on purpose yeah. to say, hey, there's this. Yeah. And that shot thing. was like, mm -hmm. as she's walking, it's like right there. Oh, so yeah. people are like, hey. Yeah. Hey, hey. Um, I, I think it's. Yeah. I think what they're doing, like with all the backgrounds and stuff, it's really cool. Like the axe, um, it's a specific axe from the first age that I'm sure they can't mention by name, uh, but they're just throwing it in there because it's like... It looks dwarven. Yeah. So it's actually, it's a human guy oh, human. wields it. Cool. Uh, I don't know where he gets, I think it's a dwarf. I think the dwarves the, uh, smith The it. pattern looked dwarven. Yeah. And then he has a, he has a, a swan shield. So oh. you also see the shield in the back. What's his name? Swan oh, thing. really? Tuor is who... Um, wields it it's like called grimbold or i can't remember what the name of the act wait is. so he one-handed that ish yeah with a, wow a baller bro that yeah. is um dude that's sick and then there's yeah just like the little easter eggs they kind of put in the background where it's like there's no way they're ever gonna talk about it right. but it's like in story these are heirlooms for the house of elros that he keeps in numenor so it's like it makes sense that they're there that's so sick. the fact that they like yeah that's paid cool. enough attention to be like yeah we're gonna throw these in the background and for nerds, you can kind of enjoy out. that it's it's pretty sweet i mean just in general that set looked so good yeah yeah and the amount that they actually built out was very impressive and that makes sense because they have got the money but yeah it's so good it's okay yeah, that's one of the things i'm really designers really enjoying is just the visuals the look of it feels great to me like and it's there's moments where i just like pause it and i'm like oh my gosh that looks awesome um that's really cool what i wanted to say though there was a um I was seeing this um, in the discussion of Adar and who he is. Apparently, there's a shot in um, in the prologue, you know, where um, where all the elves lift up the swords. Uh -huh. They're like one of the elves looks like him, mm -hmm. and the sword um, looks like the sword he has, like from a screenshot that that they did a poster. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're like, could he be one of the original elves that went over? Um, to, to Middle Earth to fight and then, mm. you know, either corrupted or fallen elf or whatever it is. But I, I like well, that. Because he I said he, like had, he had been to that river bend yes, and stuff like that. Many years ago and stuff yeah. like that. So there's, I just, I really, I'm really enjoying that about this show is that there's, they're bring, giving you questions. I think Amazon's always wanted a show that people discuss during yeah. the week. And I think they finally got it. Like, that's what they said when they first made this announcement that they were doing the Lord. They like they wanted a water cooler show mm. that people would talk about 
and you'd have people making videos and stuff like that. And I just think they're doing it in a really smart way where they're kind of presenting you with like, who's this character? And then leaving it open for speculation. There's tons of Tolkien fans that are going into books and being like, oh, what if it's this character? What if it's that character? What if it's... And I think that's exactly what they wanted to do. And it's a good thing because it gets people invested in the characters. And I just think they're doing a really good job. So one thing that I noticed with uh, Adar, his breastplate has the same pattern yeah. as the, uh, Elrond's cloak, I think, um, or, or a p- article, article of yeah. his clothing. He has a tan version of it, and he had like a black version of yeah. this. It almost looks like a river. It's like, like a river, yeah. Um, uh, I think Gil, uh, Gil-Galad he has it. has it on his okay, uh, okay, okay. armor also. So that must be an elf thing, obviously. Um, I I don't know if it'll be anything, but I noticed that yeah. with his black armor, I was like, that looks interesting. But he has black armor. Like they don't make black armor. I'm assuming in, in the Elven Smiths. But like, does that mean he still has like this connection to them? I don't know. Yeah. See, that's I don't know. that's where you can get it's weird. Super. Like the fact that you say that, like he am I looking too in, too far into it? I don't think so. Okay, okay. I think I think they're purpose. making they do it on purpose just to like lead you right try and, to lead you and uh one of the what i've seen uh people say is that which i don't think it is because mm. this character technically dies but there is a there is an elf in tolkien's lore who is called the dark elf okay. and he basically he's a smith uh he makes two black swords out of meteorite cool so we've seen a we've seen uh a black sword already in the yep. series and Adar seems to be looking for it. Yeah. Uh, but his son basically kind of takes on um, that same, like he has black hair, he's kind of pale, mm. uh, but he still kind of like calls himself the dark, the dark elf. Right. Um, and he actually betrays one of the elven hidden cities. Uh, he tells uh, Sauron and uh, Morgoth where it is. Cause ah. he's like, yeah, as long as you promise that I can rule over the city and he actually wants uh, one of the ladies there. Uh, um, he ends up getting thrown off a cliff, and uh, Tolkien specifically states he he hits he hits the cliff three times before he uh, falls to his death. So <laughs> it's pretty unlikely. He's like it, super it'd be specific. A pretty big, yeah, it, it's so funny. It's well, like, that's what his scars like he on his face. He's got times. three scars on his face. Um, <laughs> so that's one of those where it's like pretty unlikely that it's him. But the but fact that, that you mention like, oh, his armor's black. Elves don't really have yeah. black armor, and then you have this character that's like all about the black stuff you know what i mean well uh it's yeah. it's it's fun to spec it's That's, fun speculation because yeah. like if you were taught to smith a certain way you might end up with the same similar patterns and like that's just part yeah. of how you do it i don't know we but, might, yeah. i might be way looking into it i probably am and so it, it would be interesting if it's like oh that sword that he you know it's one of the black swords that he made kind yeah. of a thing which would be interesting but uh i think one of the other theories is he's one of uh feanor's sons uh maglor because mm. uh, yeah, he has he has a black uh gauntlet, that's, a black gauntlet that's the one i've heard the because most. he he grabs a silmaril and it burns his hand and he throws it in the ocean basically um so it's like i mean just the details in adar's costume it's like there's enough there they're to wanting you they're wanting you to pick up on these things and right. speculate. that's the same reason they're doing like all the characters that are that you don't know who they are. There's kind of like there's always a Sauron mentioned right. with them to be like, or even is with that the, Sa- yeah. is that Sauron? Is right. that Sauron? Right. They always do like, yeah. Oh, when the meteor guy, like mm-hmm. he's in the thing. The hot, the fire isn't hot. Galadriel says the thing about there's so much evil here that yeah. it takes the heat away. When the camera pans up, it looks like shape of an eye. eye. Yeah. Like yeah. there's all this thing. The black speech when he's like talking, and it's yeah. like okay, you know, so yeah. They're doing stuff with a lot of characters, and I assume there's going to be more characters that come in that they're going to be like, oh, that must be Sauron, to get you yeah. speculating, which I think is great. Yeah, I think it's fun. It's fun, to, it's, it's fun to have something from Tolkien's world to be able to speculate. Yes. About. You know what I mean? It's like unknown, and then you're like, hey, are they going to use some of these right. characters, these threads? Are they going to weave it in? Yeah. I think that's super yeah. fun. Um, and if you like the world, then maybe, you know, if you're just watching the show, you're like, oh, that's kind of an interesting concept. I want to learn more about it. Yeah. I think that's, that's my biggest, I think, problem with, um, people that are nitpicking about the show and being like, oh, it's woke or whatever it is, or don't watch it. This is trash. And they keep 
using that narrative, but I'm like, man, there's so many cool things. Like the amount of times I've just gone in and tried to look up something random because I'm like, oh, I, who's that character? You know? And then I go in and I, I have a, like seven books of, um, I can't remember what the author's name was, but he like, it's just a bunch of Tolkien dictionaries basically. Mm. So I've been like grabbing those things and like just reading and stuff. And I think there's a lot of fans that aren't invested in Tolkien, maybe have never even read the books, maybe they're Lord of the Rings movie fans, Mm -hmm. but this is a way for them to get back and read Tolkien's Mm. stuff, Tolkien's work. And I just think you're losing an opportunity if you're a Tolkien fan to get other people to become fans, right? It's not going to be perfect. Like they're going to miss some things. They can't do Mm. a word for word adaptation of it. It's impossible. So you can bring up the stuff that you don't like, but I just think you're missing an opportunity to bring, to welcome more fans into the Tolkien universe Mm. that are then going to go out and be like, oh, I'm going to read these books. This seems interesting. So I just think that's something cool about the show that I think other people are kind of missing the point to be like, man, welcome more people into the fandom. And I know there's the whole thing of gatekeeping and that kind of stuff. It's cool to be the... Well, Tolkien, I was the like, original fan. Right. But I just think <laughs> if you love Tolkien and you love his world, you it's want to share lovely. that with other people. And there's a great way to do that. This kind of brings me to kind of the last idea I had just so far uh, in this series. This has kind of been my only big negative is that it feels like for the normal viewer, this is a hard series to stay stick with because, and I and I think it's multifaceted. But I, when I was talking to Bree, my wife, my uh, wife, my wife, um, I was like, "Oh, how do you like Lord of the Rings so far?" And she's like, "I've only watched one episode." And I was like, "Really? Like you're not into it?" She's like, "Eh, it's okay." And I think a big issue here is that there isn't a main character. Until maybe this episode that I've truly been like rooting for and really loved. I think Durin is the first character, main character that I'm actually like, I really like that guy. And I'm really, I'm really invested in to see how his story goes forward. And I think that's one of the things that this, this series is kind of missing. I don't think Galadriel has been interesting enough or entertaining enough Mm -hmm. for people to identify with her and relate to her. And um, with the elf uh, human storyline, what's his name again? Arondir. Arondir. I don't think he's been, uh, you know, he, he's not charismatic. He's just a good, awesome dude. Like, and he's just going through it, you know? He's very stoic. Last. He's stu- super stoic. And, and even the humans, like, the, probably the kid's the most interesting aspect of that. Um, so I don't know. I just yeah. don't think that anything's doing an ex. I don't think much is doing an excellent job of whatever its specialization is. So like their romance that they have, it's not excellent in my opinion. I don't think it's relatable or you're not like really rooting for them. You're like, oh man, that elf versus human, no, no taboo situation. It's like, man, I wish that that could work out. I don't think it's really delivering. Um, and I don't think it's really getting people into it. I think if they did that better, I think more people would be into it a little bit more. That's my biggest nitpick of the series so far. I can't wait to be wrong by the end of the se- season where it's like, oh yeah, all these characters I'm rooting for so many of them, or I've got like two of them that I'm rooting for or whatever. That'd be yeah. awesome. But I think that's when you, when you compare them to similar series, um, I think that's a big thing that they're missing is that uh, relatability, yeah. rootability, Team whatever, whatever you want to call it. But I think that's the only nitpick uh, for me. But as far as like a Lord of the Rings fan in general, I love it. Uh, I'm having such a fun time. But I just feel for people who maybe didn't, weren't huge Lord of the Rings yeah, movies not fans. as much. It's a little bit harder for them to get yeah, into it. I, I can see stick that. with it. So um, I hope that this, because I think with the reveal of Durin and kind of that aspect of the dwarves, I think that was kind of an awesome window into that world. And I think that was really awesome. And that makes me want to root for him so much more. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, but yeah. Well, how do you guys feel about that? Is that like a nothing, like, eh, whatever? Like, I don't care. I'm along for the ride. I just want to, like, is it entertaining enough, uh, you think, and uh, for you, obviously? I, I mean, it for, is. for um, me, obviously it is because I'm a... But as far as the like the, the, sorry, the normal folk who aren't as invested in Lord of the Rings, do you think that... I mean, all I can, I mean, I haven't really talked to too many other people that have started it, but Crystal, I mean, she's seen the Lord of the Rings movies. Um, she's seen the Hobbit movies. She hasn't read any of the books, mm-hmm. uh, but she really likes fantasy 
shows anything fantasy she really likes and she's really enjoying it mm. um so i don't i think for her it's like um i mean like she's always excited for the next episode mm. um so i think for at least for her like the visuals have grasped uh have you know got a hold of her she's interested in the storylines and stuff like that um so i think from that perspective um I mean, she's a huge fantasy fan, though. I think Crystal is, yeah. I think Crystal's going to be on board, though, for sure. Especially because you're so excited about I'd, it. And you guys are watching them together, probably on. I'd be curious to, uh, to see what your mom would think. Okay, sure. your mom's that a, sounds like, your like mom's... a joke. It sounds like a joke, but... <laughs> your mom, <laughs> I'm curious to see what, what your mom would say about that. No, but she's like... <laughs> um, she's watched that those kind of shows. Like, what was the, um, the show that she was watching? Uh, um... Merlin. No. Merlin. Well, she did watch Merlin, but there was another <laughs> one watch. that there was another one that she was like I can't remember. It was one of those. She loves Daredevil. Um so I I'd be curious <laughs> for her like to CW see like stuff. if she would like that the the show. Yeah, I should um, I should talk to her and see if she's even if she's even if she even knows it exists. Yeah. Cuz I bet she doesn't. All right, we'll get her on the show next week. Yeah. We'll uh, have her on Aunt Aunt online. Review. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Aunt Libby gives it a Ten rhubarb pies. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can see okay. what you're saying. Um, it, it, it's my only thing that, and it, it's more of the aspect of like, I want more people to enjoy this. Yeah. And maybe the end of this season, you start really starting to root for Galadriel because she starts going through some really tough stuff or relatability, like relatable or she stuff. she softens or, a little bit. Maybe, yeah. Maybe you see a more yeah. human side of her and then you start rooting for a lot more. But I think that you need to have protagonists for a story to be really carried. Yeah. yeah. You, I think, you have to. I think the problem is that they've had to lay so much groundwork. Like you've got so many characters, you've got so many storylines. So I think a lot of like these first four episodes was them laying the groundwork. I think from here on out, I think we're going to be going through yeah. yeah getting character moments and yeah. i think one of that like we talked about the elrond and, and Durin conversations like those were yeah re- you couldn't have that in the first episode or the second episode because you had to establish who these characters were you had to establish the conflict they had their friends elrond hasn't seen him in 20 years like you needed to earn that moment and so i think you're right. What they've been doing is you, we basically have been dropped into a situation that's been like mm. thousands of years in the making and you need to explain, Hey, well, this is going on, this is going on. Yeah. And so I think these, <sighs> like Josh says, these next four episodes are going to go a long way. Mm-hmm. I think in telling if these characters are going to develop to a point where you're like, man, they have I'm to. a, they have I'm to. a, a Rondi or Stan. They have you know, to, like, because there's five seasons of it. Yeah. Right. They're this important. Um, I'm interested to see, um, th- Amazon's take on death. Yeah. When it comes to main characters, I know Game of Thrones was, <laughs> you don't know who's going to die in the next episode. Yeah. And I hope they don't take that route because uh, that's kind of copycat of you. But I- I'm interested to see how that kind of goes yeah. and plays out because we haven't really seen any of that. Even when the collapse happened in the mine, they were all good, right? Yeah. He's like, they're all, they're all good. It's like, eh. okay. So It'll be interesting to see where this goes. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to ask you guys about that because I, I was, um, I'm not sure how you guys felt about it. Yeah. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, anything else on the episode? I, I'm pretty satisfied with that episode, except for the, and the reason why I, I was kind of half joking with the Harfoots and the yeah. lack thereof. But, but out of all the storylines, <laughs> uh, Harfoots are is a very basic story. Yeah, and that's why. I, I root for her. What was her name again? Nori. Nori. Because it's a simple, it's a simple classic story, but it's, it's easy to root for her. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, I agree. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that story continues in the next episode, but I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, that's it for episode four of, uh, Rings of Power. Um, check us out next week. We'll be covering the next episode. Excited for that one. Um, and um, don't forget to comment down below how, what you guys thought about the episode. I'm really interested in seeing what your guys' kind of uh, input on it is. I don't know the general sentiment. I, I think it's yeah. kind of very mid, very like 3.5-ish, 4-ish out of 5 stars kind of in it situation. So let us know in the comments below. Uh, if you guys subscribe, that would be awesome. So you guys can at least watch it when it comes up. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. See ya. See ya. See ya.